What's up, guys? I'm Salty Mike, and this is your Star Citizen Week in Review for March 4th, 2024. I got it right this time. Not much happened this week, except the biggest thing to ever actually happen, maybe? And that was an actual server meshing test that happened on Evocati, and I enjoyed playing the game this week. All that and more on today's Week in Review. And as always, if this is your first week in review, this is where I take all of the official Star Citizen news each week, cram it into one video, and share some of my opinions about it. I also live stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash salty mic. Now, again, we didn't have that much happen this week, but there's a bit to go over, so let's go over some patch updates. And of course, we gotta start with the tech preview meshing test, because that's probably why you're all here, right? I finally get to talk to you guys about an Evo test. And of course, it was probably the least interesting one in quite some time in terms of what we actually did. But what this test represents is far from boring. There were two servers apparently meshed together and talking to the replication layer, which I'm not a network programmer, but just know that this tech is needed to add more players and more locations to the game and hopefully take quite a load off the servers one day and have AI working better and all these things. This is the tech that is supposed to make Star Citizen a thing. Whether you believe that or not, that's up to you. I'm just relaying what they're saying, right? So how well did it go? It's kind of hard to say, actually. There was, it seemed like the test was really just for them to gather data. I went to Pyro, and any footage you see on the screen is from CitizenCon at Pyro. This is not actual footage of the test, and honestly, there was really nothing to do. Yes, all the locations had QT markers, unlike the first time we went to Pyro. So I went to Pyro 6, and Pyro 5 had all of its moons and had a surface. Pyro 6 really wasn't there, um, but there were no missions or anything to do there. We were not allowed to go to jump points, as it would cause a major issue as well, but apparently they were there. This, I heard this one through the grapevine, and my server never crashed, but on the Stanton side, apparently there were a few crashes, and the replication layer recovery not only worked, uh, just a reminder, the last time we had a replication layer test, it didn't work at all, and it recovered in about two and a half minutes, which for a game in alpha, I would argue is maybe a pretty acceptable state. So what does this all mean? It's, again, it's hard to say. It depends on the information they got from us. But if we look back at the description of the test, this was a first in what is many tests before live. So I expect them to get more interesting. And certainly I expect them to be open to more players. So, you know, don't feel left out here, right? Apparently this test only had about 50 players per side. So they're going to need to open up to more of us to really find out if this thing is working, right? So if there's not a full server on each side, is this test that happened in EVO even representative? Can we say it went well because things didn't crash if there's only 50 people on either side? Can it scale? We don't know, right? So that's where we're left here, but I'm pretty happy to be able to talk to you some about something in EVO and that's great. Jumptown 2.1 is back and nobody cares. Uh, the reward isn't worth it anymore. The FPS locations, uh, well, the FPS at the locations aren't that good. Jumptown needs to be brought up to a higher standard since the cargo refactor. This event lives off the fact that most of the server would want to be there at Jumptown. But there are still more lucrative ventures, as well as the fact that many players have too much money due to exploits and unbalanced and salvage rewards over the last few months. So if nobody wants to be there, the event just doesn't hit like it used to. A few tweaks, though, and Jumptown is back in action easily right so it's not that hard to get it back it's just we're not there yet and then for developer responses on spectrum we first start out with fps changes and zach priest on spectrum shares that there's a lot of changes he wants to make and gives some examples of what works in other games but more specifically uh they want to create 
range in, I, I guess, for certain types of weapons to be effective. For example, he said the F-71 and the Gallant should be not that great in CQB, but good at mid-range. Uh, lastly, shares some of the things they want to do for SC, like lower recoil for those longer range weapons and fixing some of the issues with damage fall off, as well as items blocking shots. That one's really annoying if you've played that coin game recently. He later talks about Sniper, specifically the P6LR, and how it's just too strong. And he has a debuff plan that he's not willing to share with us yet. And then the Hornet price change. Last chance, everyone. Last chance to get your overpowered ship in the PU before they raise the price and actually have it fit in its role for master modes. Imagine raising the price of a ship you haven't even done a gold standard pass on yet. I'm trying to find what warrants this price hike. They usually do it to fit in with other ships that they've created down the line, but I can't figure this one out. So leave a comment down below if you know why they're raising the price on this one. I don't get it but the thread was locked. So yeah, I'm sure the community was pretty toxic on this one. And yeah, raising prices of ships you've been selling for years, kind of weird, I think. Uh, and then Gravlev Racing. They turned this on sometime this week, I can't remember, um, but I went head first into it. And my favorite track was Cleo, Cleo Islands, and I had so much fun. We had a little competition for between myself and Kronzi, uh, my co-host on the Answer the Call podcast. Get subscribed over there if you guys haven't yet. I'll put the link up in the, in the top right for you. This is what I need from this game, man. It's like really simple. A leaderboard allowed me to have a goal and compete against myself and others as well. And we work together to get better at the track. And I just haven't enjoyed the game like this in a really long time. And I think other people are starting to get into it now because it just has been fun. So get subscribed because I'm going to do a little short guide on how to improve at this track. And I think you might find it fun as well. Now with that, let's jump into video updates. And we don't have a lot here. The Inside Star Citizen was sadly an all art episode and they had Squadron Art Director and the Ship Director to just talk about what it looks like. They gave us a ton of great footage, but the only thing I think worth sharing really is this. Worth noting as well, like all the spaces that you're seeing are completely undressed. There are, you know, tens of thousands of entities that end up on top of what you're seeing for Squadron because it needs to feel more lived in, it needs to tell that story. So it's kind of bare bones seeing it this way, which is kind of strange for me at the moment. Yeah, it, it was very strange when we were yeah. getting this ready for the PU to, to take off all those layers and yeah. sort of see it in a state that we've not seen. Plus also we're not seeing it with NPCs. Yeah. When you see this with NPCs and you know people walking around, carrying out their duties, engineers doing their things at panels or whatnot, it feels lived in, it feels alive. Um, but, you know, hopefully when it goes into the PU, there'll be plenty of people running around anyway, um, which will make it feel very similar for you guys. Yeah, so I looked at the Idris event as basically them sharing with us the set for Squadron 42, not really the Persistent Universe ship, and they share that it's barely even a spoiler, which I think is pretty cool, that there's a lot more to come in and a lot more for us to see when Squadron actually releases. They also talked about something that's really obvious, but to make it very clear for some of you, because I know you guys don't follow the project that closely and you follow it through me, here it is. So that was a little bit of a director's commentary on the Idris, which hopefully you'll have seen and experienced as part of the event that's been going on in the Persistent Universe recently. And as great as the ship looks in the video and the events, there's, there's still quite a bit of work to do before we can give it to players to have for real. Um, things like resource network, multi-crew gameplay, all these things that make it an actual living, breathing capital ship that you want to run and own. That's that's pretty much it for now. Yeah, to echo what John said, I um, hope you enjoyed what you saw. Um, you know, still a ways to go um, with regards to sort of delivering, you know, the, the ship as a whole uh, for the PU. But I just want to give a shout out to all the teams that have been involved in working on it. I mean, the list is endless. So yeah, most of the things that could have made crewing this ship worth it and a lot more fun aren't ready yet not to mention the server being able to handle more of them in the first place right so it will be a while before this gets in any of the backers hands that may have purchased an idris so i think a lot of people think like oh my god there's an interior they're gonna give it to us now the idris that i purchased i'm gonna have it doesn't look that way yet and it definitely doesn't look that that way after this inside Star Citizen. And then Star Citizen Live was actually canceled this week. Uh, apparently the team wanted to go check out the new Dune movie, which, hey, 
I think the the video content has been really really good and if they want to do a team building thing and go you know or whatever it's a job you want to take a day off go for it I saw some toxic things even I got a little agitated by it but then you realize oh yeah they're human beings and they wanted to go and watch a movie together great uh, I don't think it's that big of a deal so let's jump into other updates <laughs> And as always, we start out with a sneak peek. So this is clearly the RSI Zeus and the title of the sneak is Landing Gear Deployed. Now, normally that would make you think that they never showed us the landing gear before, but as you can see from the video they showed at CitizenCon, it's there, it's just slightly different. Lately, the sneak peeks have been really insightful and awesome. This one is a reminder that they're making a ship that you purchased, I guess. I, I, I don't really know the point of this one, but it didn't show much to me. Let me know if I missed something, but I don't think I'm missing anything here. Uh, jump point. It's available if you're a subscriber. And in this one, they show how the team made the F8C event that was really not amazing. Uh, it was, it was, but it wasn't. It had a lot of problems. And then they also talk about the Idris and it just there's some amazingly done maps in there for it. And the Sulin is highlighted as well. So check that out if you guys haven't yet. I don't share the subscriber stuff because I think it's kind of weird. If you pay for it, you should have it exclusively, right? Uh, and then Galactopedia. Nothing really interesting here this week either. The main article, though, was on the Vandal Kingship. And they seem to go a lot into detail about the battles of the UEE and how they encountered it. And if you don't want to know any story of Squadron 42 at all before this, avoid this one like the plague. What is on the screen, of course, is spoiler safe. But, like, I'm not sure if what's in there is spoiler safe. It was pretty detailed in around the timeline of Squadron. So, uh, yeah, try to avoid that one if you don't want any story spoilers. And then the rest of the articles were mostly brand new systems. And one of them is... There's a garbage dump belt where people salvage. I think these areas like around Ariel on Hurston would be really cool. So I wish we could salvage that area and it kind of highlights how fun that could be. But with that, guys, that's it for this video. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Get subscribed if you haven't yet. Leave a comment down below on anything we talked about or anything I may have missed. And uh, yeah, just thank you for all the, the love on the videos lately. Thank you for enjoying it. Uh, you guys seem to really be enjoying the little update videos I've done like once a week here. I'd like to do more of them as well. Uh, I'm just struggling to find my like groove with that. I think you guys have seen that I found a little bit of a groove here with Week in Review. We have an awesome editor, Biggs, who's been doing such a great job. So thank you so much to Biggs for that. Make sure you leave a comment if you guys have been enjoying the editing. But with that, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next week.